Hi guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at how to solve array validation problems in Java. Uh, so what exactly is a validation problem? Um, a validation problem is one in which we're given a certain criteria, we want to search through the array, and then if we find any value in the array that meets the given criteria, we want to return true. If we don't find any items in the array that meet the given criteria, then we're going to return false. So you can see for this example, um, we're going to be working on this method contains even value. Um, so you can see here this method just uh, contains one parameter, an integer array data. Um, and we're going to return true if any of the items in data are even, and then we're going to return false otherwise. Now, a good way of approaching a problem, um, if perhaps you're not sure where to start with writing the code, um, is to go ahead and start by writing some pseudocode and kind of going through your thought process of how you're going to solve the problem. Uh, so we can go ahead and do that just up here. Um, okay, so we're going to obviously need to search through the array um, and you know start looking at the items in the array to uh, determine if they're even. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is search through each item in the array. Now, if we find a current item that's even, what does that mean? Well, if we find any item in the array that's even, then obviously we know that the array does contain an even value, which means that we don't need to check any more of the items in the array. We can just go ahead and return true. So return true. Um, if the current item is not even, we're just going to keep searching through each item consecutively in the array. Um, eventually we will reach the end condition of our loop. Uh, we'll end the loop. Now if we get to the end of the loop and we have been yet to return true, that means that we've checked every single item in the array and none of the items have come up even, uh, which means we know none of the items in the array are even and we can just go ahead and return false. So that's it. That's how the um, code's going to look. So now let's go ahead and try writing that in actual Java. So. Uh, we're obviously we're going to need to use some sort of loop to search through the array, so we'll go ahead and use a for loop. Um, so we'll say for int i equals zero, i is less than data dot length. Whoops. I plus plus. If data i. Uh, modulo, where is my, there it is, modulo 2 equals 0. Um, so that's just checking for um, if the item is even, um, then data i modulo 2 will equal 0. Um, then we know the item is even, we're going to return true. Can't type. Um, and we're going to keep um, looping through data, checking each item. Eventually we're going to get to the end of our loop um, and then if we get to the end of our loop and we find that none of the items in the array have been true, I mean have been even, sorry, then we're going to go ahead and return false. So now that we've written uh, the method, we can look down here and see that I've written some JUnit tests. Um, in order to test the contains even value method. Um, so let's go ahead and run this now as a JUnit test um, and we'll see if the method that I've written uh, passes all the tests. Okay, so when I run it right away you can see I've got an error um, and if we look down here you can see that I've experienced a null pointer exception and then if I look here you can see that it's occurred on line 39. I'll just double click, whoops, double click that. Um, so it's occurred at the first test. Um, assert false contains even value null. Um, so this is something that's going to happen really often when you write a method, you test it, 
Um, it's going to fail on one of the tests maybe because you've failed to account for say a um, null array or an empty array. Um, so this is what's happened here. I've failed to account for the array well, I've failed to account for my method being passed a null uh, value rather than an array. Um, so, often as well, it's worth pointing out, uh, it often won't be intuitive how necessarily you're supposed to deal with, say, an empty array or a null array. Like in this case, it might not be intuitive whether you should be returning false or uh, true for a null array. But you can always take a look down in the tests and that will, you know, that should, if the tests have been written correctly, tell you um, how you're meant to be dealing with these values. Um, so now we can see that when we're, uh, when our method is passed a null array, then we want to be returning false. So I can go ahead and um, now deal with that accordingly by just adding, um, something to deal with null values. So we can go ahead and say for, well, not for, if data equals null, then we want to return false. Um, now I'll go ahead and run this again, and we can see now that my method has passed all of the tests. Um, it's also really useful as well, so it's not just for null and empty arrays. Um, sometimes, for example, if you're dealing with odd and even values, um, you might not uh, you might not intuitively know whether or not, for example, you're supposed to consider zero an even value for the purpose of the problem that you're trying to solve. But it's really handy to remember you can always just look down in the tests, and that should tell you, uh, generally speaking, what you're meant to be doing with edge cases such as that. So if I look down here, I can see that um, if I have an array that just contains zero, um, then I want my method to return true, and therefore I can see, okay, zero is obviously considered an even number for the purpose of this method that I'm writing. Um, so that's just a quick look at how to deal with validation problems um, in arrays. Um, so these can take many forms, this is just one example, but the general rule with validation problems is that you're always searching through an array for any value that meets the given criteria. It could be that you're looking for um, any even number, any odd number, um, any positive number, any negative number, but the general format of how you solve the problem is generally always going to be the same. The only thing, part of this, really, that we're going to be changing is, um, really, a lot of the times, just this if statement right here. So, for example, let's say instead of this method being called contains even value, um, we have a method uh, contains positive value. So now, instead of searching for any uh, even value in our array, we're searching for any positive value. The only part of this that we're going to need to change is this part right here, where we're going to instead be saying if data i is greater than zero, then we know we've found a positive value, we can return true. If we get to the end of our array and we haven't returned true, we return false, exactly the same. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys um, have a better understanding now of how to deal with validation problems uh, with arrays. Um, I would also definitely recommend that you take a look at our video on violation problems. I'll put a link to that down in the description below um, because I think that oftentimes people get confused um, about the difference between validation and violation problems and the different approaches that you need to take in dealing with each of those types of problems. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys found this helpful. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.